consider the second order differential equation ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals zero. So we found that if r1 and r2 are distinct real roots, The characteristic equation a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero, then the general solution is y equals c1 e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2t and if r1 equal r2 r um, so we have not distinct real roots um, Then the general solution is y equals c1e to the r1t plus c2e, sorry, c2te to the r1t because R1 and R2 are the same, so it doesn't matter. So these are the two cases we have done so far. So the next question is, what if R1 and R2 are complex? Well, if R1 and R2 are complex, then our solution will look something like E to the R1T, but what does it mean to raise e to a complex number. Well, we're going to go back and think about um, Maclaurin series. So if we recall, the Maclaurin series for e to the t is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of t to the n over n factorial. And the Maclaurin series for sine t is the sum n equal 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1, t to the 2n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 factorial. And the Maclaurin series for cosine t is the sum n equal 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, t to the 2n over 2n factorial. So um, I'm going to write out a few terms of these just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So this is going to be t to the 0 over 0 factorial, which is just going to be 1, plus t to the 1st over 1 factorial plus t squared over 2 factorial, plus t cubed over 3 factorial, plus yada, yada, yada. This one, the sine one, is going to have all the odd powers, right? So it's going to start out with um, t to the first over th 1 factorial. 
and then it's going to go minus t cubed over 3 factorial plus t to the 5th over 5 factorial minus t to the 7th over 7 factorial plus yada yada yada. So the signs keep flipping and we have the odd powers of t. Um, the cosine one is going to have the even powers of t, so it's going to start out with 1 plus minus, sorry, let's see, 1 minus t squared over 2 factorial plus t to the 4th over 4 factorial minus t to the 6th over 6 factorial plus and yada yada yada. So the cosine t has all the even powers. Okay. All right. So that we'll put in a box because we're going to use that in a minute. Okay. So what if I had, um, this is called Euler's formula. is what we're about to discover here. So say if I have e to the i t, well that's equal to the sum n equals zero to infinity of i t to the n over n factorial, and that's just from the definition of the Maclaurin series uh, for e. So what is that? Well that's equal to i t over one factorial minus uh, let's see, plus i squared t squared over 2 factorial plus i cubed t cubed over 3 factorial plus i to the fourth t to the fourth over 4 factorial plus i to the fifth t to the fifth over 5 factorial plus i to the sixth t to the 6th over 6 factorial plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit. So I'll have i t over 1 factorial minus, so i squared is negative 1, t squared over 2 factorial, and then i cubed is going to be negative i, so minus i t cubed over 3 factorial. i to the fourth again is 1. And then I'll have i to the fifth is going to be a uh, positive i and then i to the sixth will be negative 1. So here's one thing I want you to notice. I want you to notice that all of these terms that have i's in it are odd powers of t. Have the i's in it and the even powers of t don't have i's. So what we end up with is we have this um, negative t squared over 2 plus t to the fourth over 4 factorial uh, minus t to the sixth over 6 factorial plus blah 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 plus i times t over 1 factorial minus t cubed over 3 factorial plus t to the fifth over 5 factorial minus t to the seventh over seven factorial, and so on. And so here we can see this is the Maclaurin series. These odd powers are the Maclaurin series for cosine. And these even powers is the Maclaurin series. Oh, whoops, I did it backwards. The, um, sorry, the odd powers are the Maclaurin series for sine. And the even powers are the Maclaurin series for cosine. So we end up with cosine t plus i sine of t. So what does that mean geometrically? Geometrically, that means that we have this um, real, com real and complex plane i r. So we can plot any complex number in this plane. And so um, for the angle, we think about the t as an angle here. And if this distance is 1, and that's the point here, then sine t 
is like the y value and cosine t is like the x value for that point. Okay? So that can help us think about what e to the i t means. So, for example, e to the negative 3 plus 6i would be equal to e to the negative 3 times e to the 6i, which would be e to the negative 3 times, well, what is e to the 6i? Well, it's cosine 6 plus i sine 6. Okay, so it's going to have this e to the real part plus cosine of the complex part plus i sine of the complex part. So here is our theorem here. If a characteristic equation has complex conjugate roots, lambda plus or minus i mu with, of course with mu non-zero, because if mu were zero then it would be real, um, then the generalist solution is y equals c1 e to the real part cosine of the complex part plus c2 e to the real part sine of the complex part mu of t mu times t sorry not mu of t So this is our general solution. Oh, I just realized I made a mistake here. It needs to be C1e to the lambda t, C2e to the lambda t. Yeah, okay, that's right. Okay, so here's our solution. So we can say, we can figure out pretty quickly that the roots of this characteristic equation are 1 fourth plus or minus 3i. So you can do that using the quadratic formula or um, yeah, I guess the quadratic formula would be a nice way to do that. So what's the general solution? By the previous theorem is going to be y equals c1e to the t over 4 cosine of 3t plus c2e to the t over 4 sine of 3t. Okay, and so then to solve for C1 and C2, I can use these initial values that I've been given. So I know that if I plug in zero, I should get uh, negative two out. So negative two should be equal to C1 e to the zero cosine of zero plus C2 e to the zero sine of zero. Now I know that sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, so negative 2 is equal to C1. And um, 
Oh gosh. Okay, so then to use my next bit of information, I need to find out what y prime is. So y prime is going to be equal to, okay, I got to use product rule twice. So I'll have C1e to the t over 4 times 1 fourth cosine 3t plus C1e to the t over 4 um, times negative sine of 3t times 3 plus, let's do product rule over here, so C2e to the t over 4 times 1 fourth sine of 3t plus C2e to the t over 4 uh, cosine 3t times 3 again by the chain rule. Okay, so if I plug in 0, I should get 1. So 1 equals C1e to the 0 times 1 fourth cosine 0 plus C1e to the 0 times negative sine of 0 times 3 plus C2e to the 0 times 1 fourth sine of 0 plus C2e to the 0 cosine of 0 times 3. Okay, now we know sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. So we get 1 equals C1 times 1 fourth plus C2 times 3. Um, so that gives me 1 equals, okay, what was C1 was negative 2, so negative 1 half plus 3c2, and then that gives me c2 is equal to 1 half. So I've solved for my constants, and so now I can give my particular solution. is going to be y equals, and I'm just going to plug in what I got for c1 and c2 into my general solution. So c1 was negative 2, e to the t over 4, cosine 3t. Plus, and then for C2, I got 1 half, so I'll plug that in. 